Intensity by Dean Kunst. So uh, this is my first Dean Kunst novel, and I've always heard about him. A lot of people compare him to Stephen King, at least the vol sheer volume of no uh, books that he's written. And uh, so I was curious. I have like three other Dean Kunst novels, and I always heard that this one was super intense and that it was a good one to start out with uh, when you actually first begin to read Dean Kuntz. And uh, I got to tell you, it lives up to the name. This book was unbelievably intense. Like, golly, it was suspenseful. It was scary. To give you kind of a brief description of the premise, um, the main character is China Shepherd. She's kind of a very troubled past, uh, lots of abuse and that sort of thing. And, well, long story short, in the first chapter, some horrible things happen to her friends, and um, she is kind of uh, both running from and running away from a psychotic serial killer named Ed Edgler Vess, who uh, is one of the most terrifying fictional characters I've read about in a long, long while. Like, golly, as serial killer uh, stories go, this would be like, if they made this into a movie, it would be like the most like haunting like terrifying movie. It'd be like, uh, I mean, Ed Edgler Vest is a sick monster who, ugh, the things he wants to do to women and has done to women. Ugh. So that's kind of what you're dealing with. It's a essentially, yeah, a serial killer book, and uh, but it's a little bit more complex than that because the character of China Shepherd is very complex, and the story. Uh, is unpredictable and uh, it really does keep you on the edge of your seat. Like I said, it lives up to the name. It is very intense. Uh, the only flaws I have with the book is uh, some of the writing is fantastic. Some of it is not so much. Uh, towards the beginning of the of the novel, uh, there's this scene of dialogue between China and her friend Laura, and it's not good. It's not good dialogue. It's the kind of dialogue that you would think an author would write. It's the kind of dialogue that an author thinks people normally uh, speak in, but they definitely don't. Like one of the one of the characters used the word iridescent when describing something, and I'm like, nobody, certainly not college girls uses vocabulary like iridescent blue falling from the sky and whirling blue. nobody talks that way i mean it it was clearly kind of like this is a writer talking <laughs> you know and uh so some of the dialogue particularly towards the beginning was not so good it definitely got better as the book kind of like really settled into its story there were some really great scenes of dialogue just that opening chapter has a scene of dialogue that's just not good um and also there are some of the other writing some of the prose writing uh is what i like to call intrigue writing and it's where it's like a paragraph ends and it's supposed to be like a ooh moment but it i felt like the book tried too hard uh, particularly towards like the, you know in the first half of the book to bring chills to your spine uh with the way things were uh worded when in reality, it just made me go, mm, that's a little cringy. Uh, but with all that being said, the novel is truly like, it's a thrill ride and it is totally worth reading. I do recommend that you read it. It, uh, it, once you get through the first chapter, I mean, by the end of the first chapter, I was hooked and I was hooked to the entire rest of the book. It was terrifying. Like I was like really worried about what was going to happen. Uh, and I got to say, like, the the book had some, there was some depth to it. Some of the themes that were explored, I was surprised. Like, the ending, the ending actually made me cry. I'm brave enough to admit it. The ending actually made me weep a little bit. And uh, not out of, not out of, like, sorrow or just, like, depression tears, but, like, out of, like, this is some seriously deep shit kind of tears <laughs> you know like it's the kind of tears you you cry when oh but the, you know it's seen the first at the end of the first lord of the rings uh where sam runs out into the river and he's drowning and frodo frodo gets him back into the boat and the music's soaring and sam's like i, I made a promise mr frodo and 
yes, I am admitting that that scene make me makes me cry. Uh, and the ending of this this book was similar in the kind of emotional, uh, the the emotional weight of it. Like it just was like that, like it was good good tears uh, over seriously powerful shit. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the only thing like. I would love to, just to intrigue your interest, I want to read one passage, or actually two, just to show an example of some of Kuntz's writing. Uh, this is not a spoiler by any means. This is just simply a description, this first one, of the character Edgler Vess. It's an example of beautiful writing, and it really sets the stage for what a terrifying character Edgler Vess is. So I'm just going to go ahead and read. <clears throat> The big lie is that such concepts as love, guilt, and hate are real. Put Mr. Vess into a room with any priest, show them a pencil, and they will agree on its color, size, and shape. Blindfold them, hold cinnamon under their noses, and they will both identify it from the smell. But bring before them a mother cuddling her baby, and the priest will see love, where Mr. Vess will see only a woman who enjoys the sensations provided by the infant. The scrubbed smell of it, the softness of its pink skin, the undeniably pleasing roundness of its simple, simply formed face, the musicality of its giggle, its apparent helplessness and dependence deeply satisfy her. The greatest curse of humanity's high intelligence is that, in most members of its species, it leads to a yearning to be more than they are. All men and women, in Vess's view, are fundamentally nothing more than animals. Smart animals, indeed, but animals nonetheless. Reptiles, in fact, in evolved from whatever fish with legs first crawled out of the primordial sea. They are, he knows, motivated and formed solely by sensory stimuli, yet unable to admit to the primacy of physical sensation over intellect and emotion. They are even frightened of the reptile consciousness within, its needs and hungers, and they attempt to restrict its sensations seeking by using lies such as love, guilt, hate, courage, loyalty, and honor. This is the philosophy of Mr. Edgler Vess. He embraces his reptilian nature. The glory of him is to be found in his unmatched accretion of sensations. This is a functional philosophy, requiring its adherent to endorse neither the black and white values that so hamper religious persons, nor the embarrassing contradictions of the situational ethics that characterize both the modern, modern atheists and those whose religion is politics. I mean, that, that is the philosophy of Mr. Edgler Vess. I hope my reading was coherent enough to understand. Um, some, some of my inflect, inflection was probably a little cryptic, but I mean, like haunting and that's beautiful writing. And, uh, Kuntz clearly has a grasp of things like that last bit on, uh, neither the black and white values that so hamper religious persons, nor the embarrassing contradictions of the situational ethics that characterize both the modern atheists and those whose religion is politics. That's quite an indictment of most many sides of the uh, existential thought present in our world today and uh yeah very impressive and most of the book I, I i will say is written as expertly as that but as i said earlier some of it not so much uh the only other thing i'd like to read is a short little passage from uh let's see i gotta make sure i read yeah okay a short little passage. This is to illustrate a little bit about China Shepherd, uh, the main character, uh, and just kind of her capacity uh, for hope and for um, caring. She's she's a great character. I'm just going to go ahead and read this little short passage to illustrate something about her. Um, hope wasn't a cottage in the industry. It was neither a product that she could manufacture like needlepoint samplers, nor a substance she could secrete in her cautious solitude, like a maple tree producing the essence of syrup. Hope was to be found in other people by reaching out, by taking risks, by opening her fortress heart. And, uh, yeah, I mean, she's that kind of, she's a very complex, complex character who most of her life, uh, before the story of this novel, uh, was reserved, terrified of the world, terrified of opening up to anyone. And now she's forced to open up to someone in this book and forced to 
reach out and be with people and uh, hope in other people and uh, open her fortress heart. It's be- it's really beautiful. Like uh, I was kind of I was pleasantly surprised by the depth of the book, and uh, I would give intensity. Overall, I would give it an A. Um, for writing, I would give it, um, for the most part, an A minus, but sometimes a B or a B minus. Um, but you know, still pretty well written. Uh, the story is solid A. So yeah, intensity gets overall an A for awesome and an I for intense. AI awesome intense. Shut up, Carter. You sound so stupid. Anyways, yeah, would recommend. 